Hi, everybody. Th thank you so much for joining us. Um, we are at the Port of Vancouver, and joining us today is Peter Exada from the uh, Port of Vancouver. He's the VP of Operations and Supply Chain. So, Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Vancouver. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Um, so, can you quickly discuss the um, mission and vision of, of the port? Sure. So, um, Port Authority in Vancouver, not dissimilar to other ports that, uh, that you might have been to in the past. Um, our role is a federal one, so the Port of Vancouver, the Vancouver Fraser Port Authority is actually the legal name, is a port similar to other ports in Canada, but there's 14 that fall under the legislation called the Canada Marine Act. Our role is really about facilitation of trade for the country. Canada as a, as a nation has a really strong dependence on trade, and, and so uh, for the port uh, employees it's really an important mission both for our organization but, but uh, also, also the, uh, the, the country. Um, our mission, as you can imagine, is about facilitation of trade, mm -hmm. protecting the environment, ensuring operations happen safely, and respecting the communities that we are uh, in uh, and that the cargo flows uh, flows through. So that's the that's the primary goal. Okay, and then can you talk about the capabilities of the port as well? Sure. Um, the port handles about 145 million tons of cargo each year. And one of the distinguishing factors of Vancouver, because of its role in the Canadian context, is we have a diversity of cargos that uh, that um, is, is we, we think unique. Uh, partly because Canada, as a trading nation, grew up shipping uh, commodities outbound, uh, so wheat, coal, potash, commodities like that. And of course, on the inbound, uh, a lot of container traffic, and that's the business that's been uh, part of the business that's been growing quite rapidly over the years. Still, proportionately in terms of tons, uh, the, uh, the the bulk commodities that I mentioned still make up the, the majority of the total volume. Uh, but as I said, uh, that's growing as well as our uh, intermodal traffic that has has become a big part of what Vancouver does. Okay. And then can you also touch on the um, role it plays for the national and international logistics sector as well? Yeah, so uh, I mentioned, you know, Canada is, uh, is, is uh, a, a trading nation, has been mm -hmm. historically, but we, we, of course, do our international trade on the east and west coast, so a lot of traffic is funneled through relatively few arteries or through uh, relatively few supply chains. Some of those challenges manifesting today, frankly, uh, because of that dependence. But um, the, the role that we play is really providing transportation services for the importers and exporters through this country. Uh, and one dollar in three uh, that uh, is traded by Canada comes through the Port of Vancouver. So you can see as, as, as far as ports go in the country and internationally, Vancouver plays a very, very prominent, uh, prominent role. Okay. Um, and then for 2021 was a very hectic and crazy year for all of us. Um, can you touch on some of the, the, the um, challenges faced and then also some opportunities and stuff that you all have had also? Yeah, I could say I'm sure for uh, Schenker and for the Port of Vancouver, we've lived through a couple, or maybe three years that uh, that we would yeah. rather not uh, rather not repeat. From the perspective of the resilience of the Port of Vancouver, though, we've been uh, quite remarkably resilient, both the economy and the and the port. Uh, our volume of cargo over the last couple of years has remained stable overall, and our intermodal traffic has actually in, uh, increased. The performance through the gateway during that time is something that has been challenged for sure, uh, but we're, we're, we're proud of the work that's been done by the Port Authority service providers, our railways, our terminals have really done a, a great job of managing through what is clearly one of the biggest disruptions in the supply chain that we've, uh, that we've experienced globally for, for quite some number of years. And then can you touch a little more on COVID and how that impacted the port? Yeah, so uh, obviously uh, sustaining operations is critical in any port, but uh, but certainly in Vancouver, given the role that it plays and the, the prominence it plays in terms of Canada, we were very focused on making sure that we were uh, working with industry to adopt the various protocols. The health authorities were very, uh, very proactive in Canada and in our province, British Columbia. And uh, certainly from the perspective of uh, impacts to the supply chain, mm -hmm. there were some. Some of those critical services, like pilots, you want to really make sure that there's not a there's not a shortage of pilots to bring vessels in and out. Um, uh, uh, went reasonably, uh, I'd say, reasonably well relative to, to other uh, to other ports around the, around the world, uh, and it remains stable. And we're now kind of climbing uh, climbing out of that. We've also been playing a, a lead uh, role in terms of vaccination of seafarers because, as you know, over the last number uh, of years in particular, there were some real challenges in moving seafarers right. to vessels to rotate crews. And, and the Port of Vancouver has put in place a program working with industry and 
and working with our health authority to make sure that as uh, as crews arrive in Vancouver, they're treated uh, respectfully and, and, and appropriately, but also that crews that are, are on vessels just come through Vancouver and have the availability of getting vaccinated, which uh, which uh, we're very proud of the program that we put in place to do that. And then how have companies like D.B. Shanker kind of helped in those times, other um, logistics companies and stuff like that? Yeah, well, I mean, first off, I should have said at the outset, really appreciate the very strong relationship we've had with D.B. Shanker for, for many years. I can think of a lot of initiatives. and. Uh, you know, kind of a, a hallmark of D.B. Schenker has always been being very proactive. I, I recall even 20 years ago, the digitization agenda that, uh, that uh, Schenker had uh, was really something that we learned uh, learned a lot from. What we relied on for uh, from uh, uh, the logistics providers in the Gateway during the pandemic was, first off, to, to develop a, a, a patience and appreciation by your customers that uh, were working hard to address uh, some of the challenges that we uh, that we faced. And really trying to triage uh, issues that were uh, that uh, had arisen during the pandemic. So, for example, uh, issues around medical supplies and whatnot. Really looking to the logistics providers to help us uh, ensure that uh, you know the population was safe, uh, that equipment could get to its final destination, and that you know our, our core customers, the bulk of the volume, was uh, being handled in an appropriate way, given all of the multitude of challenges that we were facing. I'm pleased to say uh, that. While we have had uh, some exceptionally challenging times over the last 24 months, we're now starting to see a trend back to more uh, traditional levels of service that we uh, that we deliver in the Port of Vancouver and that our terminals deliver. Uh, and we're looking forward to working with Anchor to, Anchor to continue to grow the Port of Vancouver. Perfect. And then what other projects or um, do you have in store for 2022? Um, infrastructure? areas and stuff like that, investments? Yeah, there's really an interesting dialogue unfolding, particularly uh, in Canada. I'm sure it's happening in other countries as well. Um, our uh, Minister of Transport, I guess our boss as a port, as a port uh, uh, we, we, we report through to the Minister of Transport federally, uh, has really uh, uh, recognized that there's a, a need for more resilience in the supply chain, more, uh, more capacity. Uh, and so our federal government has made available some funding, emergency funding, to deal with uh, to deal with uh, congestion events. We're uh, taking advantage of some of that to build uh, a, a, an empty container storage depot. A new 40-acre depot was opened, frankly, in record time. Uh, you know, th th this is unheard of to get federal approvals in 10 days, and from the inception of the concept to operation of this 40-acre container yard was 56 uh, 56 business days. So. You know, kinds of time horizons for developing physical infrastructure that are that are unheard of in our environment. Really, just recognizing that everybody was pulling together mm -hmm. to make sure that we were responding to the business issues that uh, that our logistics providers uh, were were facing. Beyond that, it's really about continuing on with the agenda uh, that the port has had. As you can imagine, as a port, our job is really about delivering capacity for the for the economy and for uh, trade to continue to grow. So in that respect, we're building more uh, terminal capacity, uh, and our tenants are building uh, more uh, 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 capacity of all types. But certainly, on the container side of things, we have a, a, a very important project underway just outside our window, actually, uh, the Centrum Expansion Project, which will take that facility from 900,000 TEUs to 1.5 million TEUs. Wow. And given that growth that, that I mentioned to you, it's, 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 it's right on time because we continue to experience strong demand for, uh, for Vancouver. Separate from that, we're working on a very large uh, project and have been for some time in the permitting uh, stages of that uh, development, what we call the RBT2 project or the Roberts Bank Terminal 2 project. That's a, a brand new 2.4 million TEU terminal that we're uh, approaching the end uh, stages of permitting and we, we hope to begin construction in the next uh, year or two on that project for delivery in about 20, uh, in, in and around 2030. Um, Frankly, it's a little bit uh, uh, further out than we would like, but we think that uh, it's uh, going to be important given the strong book of business that we have uh, through the partnerships with uh, with D.B. Schenker and others to, to continue to grow uh, Vancouver. Separate from that, our Port Authority has had a very uh, strong uh, strategic uh, imperative around improving first and last mile performance. So. Terminal facilities are important, but of course, getting trucks and rail to yeah. those facilities and from them is also very, very important. I'm pleased to say the port uh, over the last decade has really been seized with improving the network in and around our port facilities so that we can really extract some of the uh, uh, efficiencies that 
the terminals and the railway, they're all building into their operating plans. So we have today about uh, $1.2 million worth of um, incremental, uh, smallish uh, uh, infrastructure projects. I say smallish and that they're 50 to $100 million, so they're not, they're not small projects uh, per se, but, but a series of those that we think will allow us to continue to have a network that supports that growth uh, and, and, and provides for the terminals, whoever they are uh, uh, in, in the port, who are making very important uh, investments to continue to grow Canada, they need to earn an economic return on those investments. Mm -hmm. The supply chain capacity to support that investment is critical to their, their, to their investment decision. And then finally, uh, we talked about terminal infrastructure, first and last mile infrastructure. Then there's the digital infrastructure that uh, the port is, is working on. Our, 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 our momentum on this, in this space is really uh, starting to, to really get uh, traction mm -hmm. and accelerate, particularly in the context of the challenges that we've had. We all recognize we can't build the amount of uh, uh, surplus capacity that we might all like to have in, in events like the, the pandemic or some of the, uh, the other shocks that we've had to the system. So we need to be smarter, we need to extract latent capacity, and we need to find ways to collaborate more effectively uh, with all of our supply chain partners. So the port is, is really seized with that agenda and really now starting to put a lot of effort and energy into it. And then can you touch on trade um, to, to and from APAC for the port? Yeah, uh, obviously uh, trade from the west coast of North America, in particular uh, from, from Vancouver, uh, has, has historically been our, our primary uh, market. Uh, and that continues today, notwithstanding a lot of, uh, I'd say a lot of uh, forecasters talking about shifting trade patterns, shifting manufacturing, et cetera. Uh, given our position uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, in the Pacific Coast here, uh, those markets that uh, have really become, uh, come to dominate our trade, we anticipate will continue to do so in the next, uh, for the next 20 or, or, or 30 years. And there's evidence, again, you know, through the pandemic that the strong value proposition through Vancouver that's, that's part of the physicality of it, but also the services that, that your company provides is, is, is continuing to drive customers to Vancouver. And, and, and frankly, the more capacity we have, I think, uh, the, the, more, the more opportunity there is for uh, importers and exporters. Okay. And then do you see any like, patterns between APAC and Canada at all? Or? Um, I'd say that the trade patterns that we've seen are, uh, you know, again, some of them may have implode, but the fundamental ones remain very, very strong between Canada and China, uh, Canada and Japan, uh, Canada and Korea. Those, those patterns uh, are ones that are, are really come to make up the lion's share of the volume of business that we do. Um, others will emerge, uh, but, but those ones are ones that we think there's still ample opportunity for, uh, for growth. And, and as I said, those, uh, those trade patterns really benefit from Canada's um, um, physical position, our capabilities, and our access to both the Canadian and, to some extent, the U.S. market. Perfect. Well, then, um, how, how should people get in touch with the port? Is, is there a site you recommend they go to, or a specific person they should contact for any ocean needs? Certainly. Well, I, I mean, I think we've, we've got a, a, a very proactive customer engagement team led by Catherine Bamford and, and Carmen Ortega uh, and Jane Bam. Any one of those three folks, I suspect a lot of the folks uh, that might be listening to this are, are, have met one or more of those individuals, but really portvancouver.com is our website that can direct you to, to kind of the full suite of, of services and facilities that we have. Uh, you know, we're, we're part of the, 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 the mechanism here in Vancouver that makes this work. You and your company are as well, but we have 29 major marine terminals, each expert in their, you know, in their field, and, uh, and uh, they can, they can certainly assist with any questions that, uh, that uh, uh, listeners have uh, about the Port of Vancouver. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Again, thanks to, to Shaker and the, and the business that you do through Vancouver and for coming here and visiting with us today. Okay.